and we hold down spacebar, you'll see that our player will shoot. And we can shoot left or right, which is fine, but I'm, you'll see that he doesn't move. And that's because we set the velocity back to zero. Um, and then we can run and we can shoot. And as soon as we do that, he sort of, uh, he stops moving. So I have some other graphics, which at some point I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally clean up um, where I have separate, uh, separate body and separate legs. So you can actually still be running or standing and shooting. The only difference is that you wind up having to have multiple um, animation controllers and you have to sync it all up. And it winds up being really complicated. So I left that sort of out of this book. Uh, so the final thing we're going to do is we're going to build a bullet and we're going to shoot it. So let's, uh, let's drag this bullet, anima uh, this, this bullet animation into our scene. And he's going to be really tiny, so let's, let's not lose him. Uh, and for this guy, we're going to add a, a rigid body, 2D. Uh, we also uh, want to make sure that it's a, a fixed angle so that it doesn't sort of like rotate or deflect off anything and start rotating. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is we want to get rid of gravity, right? We don't want our bullets to be affected by gravity, so we'll just set that gravity to zero. Now let's create a new script, and we're going to call this script uh, bullet. And in our bullet, let's open up the actual bullet. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a velocity that will be its starting velocity. And then once we give it that velocity, since there's no gravity um, or no drag, it's just going to keep moving in that particular direction. So we'll do a public uh, vector 2. And we'll call this velocity equals new vector 2. And we'll set it to 5 and 0. It's, it's very important to make sure that the bullets move faster than the actual player. So one of the things to do when you're uh, balancing is, is uh, testing out that you can't run faster than the, the bullets or you'll wind up inadvertently shooting yourself. Uh, so the other thing that we need to do here is that since this has been changed in Unity 5 and we can't get a reference to rigid body 2D, we're going to have to come up with our own, uh, our own one. So we'll do private uh, rigid body 2D. We'll just call it body 2D. And uh, what we'll do is in this we're going to do void uh, awake. And we'll do body 2D uh, equals uh, oops, get component uh, rigid body 2D. Alright, now in the start method, when we're actually ready to run this, we're going to apply this velocity. So we'll do body 2D dot velocity equals velocity. So in this case, uh, we can save this script. For some reason, Visual Studio doesn't want to let me save. So I'll just do it the hard way. Uh, open this back up. Sure. Of course, you need to change the line endings because I'm saving it on a Mac, but I'm really running it on a Windows. And you're totally confused by that. So if we were to run this real quick, uh, the bullet is just going to, the bullet should just fly away. Oh, but it's not going to because I have not added the script to it. So let's just add bullet to the game object and run it. And now the bullet is going to fly away. It's super hard to see, um, but there it goes. So bullet is moving away, and it'll just keep moving that way forever and ever and ever and ever until you stop the game. Uh, let's save this and make this bullet into a prefab. And uh, let's see, we attached the bullet script. Uh, we made it into a prefab. Now at this point, we're done with this bullet. So let's delete the bullet from the scene. And we'll just be making all the rest of the changes to our uh, prefab. So, um, so now back in the player. Let's go to our player here. 
Um, I also want to hit apply here and remember to save back any changes because I've been modifying the player script. Um, let's open up the player script and we need to make uh, two new properties. So we'll do public game object ammo and public uh, transform fire marker. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to need a reference for what the actual instance is that we're going to spawn when we shoot. And then we need a place for where that actually gets fired from, right? Because if we didn't have this fire marker and we just used the center of the body, it would look like he's shooting from inside of himself. And that's a little weird. Uh, down here we want to make a, um, a public uh, property or a public method here called void uh, fire. And in this, we're going to see uh, if ammo uh, does not equal null, right? So if we have a reference to ammunition, uh, we're going to do var clone equals um, instantiate. And here we're going to do, uh, a, we're going to instantiate a new game object. So we'll give it a reference to ammo. Um, we're going to use its fire marker uh, position. And we're going to set its rotation uh, to identity. Uh, so this is a quaternoid dot uh, identity. Did I spell this wrong? Uh, quaternoid. Identity, there we go. Uh, which basically, that this is just the rotation, so we set its rotation to zero uh, as a game object. All right, and the last thing we want to do is we want to change the clone, uh, transform uh, local scale to match our player. So this way, um, what's happening is, is that if the bullet is moving to the left, it's going to um, it's going to look like it's moving to the left. It's hard to see because it's only two pixels, but if you had something that was a little bit more complicated um, visually, you'd want it to be facing the correct direction. Now let's add a fire marker. So, so we'll go back into Unity here and we're going to go into uh, create an empty child. And this is going to create a game, game object. It's right here. And we're going to move this game object basically to right where the bullet is. Now we could do this by hand, right, and just add in this value. We could just say, all right, there's a new vector position and it's 0 0.405 by 0 0.099. Who wants to really do that, right? Um, I will clean this up a little bit. So in this case, it's going to be 0.1 and uh, 0.40, right? And now this this is going to sit inside of here. So let's Let's rename this to Fire Marker. And just so that we can help see it, we're going to give it a label. It's a really big label, but I just want you to be able to see something real quick. When we move the player around, this is now going to move with it because it's a child of the player. Uh, this is incredibly large. I don't, <laughs> I don't really need this, so we'll set this to none. Um, I think in the book I say I, I don't even set it. So, okay. Now, let's go back into our player script here, and we're going to drag the fire marker over here, so we now have this position, and from our prefabs, we're going to drag the bullet into the ammo, uh, and we'll hit save, and let's apply this back to the parent. So at this point, our player is ready to shoot. The only thing is that we don't have a way of calling a fire. So we're going to do a neat little trick. Instead of having to time this out and, and do all kinds of wacky stuff, we can actually add a, uh, a call to a method from inside of an animation. So right here, we're going to create a, um, a new event. And when this event comes out, it'll give you public properties of methods uh, in, your, in, in any script that's attached to that object. So in this case here, we can call fire. 
And what's good about this is that this is going to self-regulate. Um, this is going to wind up self-regulating the shooting for us. So we don't have to have a timer saying, hey, in uh, 0.3 seconds you can shoot again. Every time this animation plays and it loops, it'll automatically keep, uh, it'll automatically keep calling fire for us. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to run the game. And now if I hit spacebar, we'll zoom in, you'll see that, that he's actually able to shoot that and everything is sort of connected up. Now these bullets are just going to keep flying off into space indefinitely. Um, but so far so good. Now let's go to the left and let's shoot. Now I'll get it to where you can see it. So if, if, I, if I face left now and I shoot, the bullet is actually looking in the right direction, but it's still moving in the wrong direction. So what we want to do is let's go back into our bullet here and we'll open up our bullet script. And at, at start, what we need to do is we need to change the velocity based on the actual uh, transform, the, the local scale. So we're going to multiply this velocity by transform uh, local scale x. And you'll remember that once we instantiate the game object, we change its scale. So start gets called after we change its scale. So now if we run this and we look to the left, we'll be shooting to the left. And if we look at this, we'll shoot it to the right. So the last thing we want to do is we want to clean up this bullet here. So we're going to keep track of the distance that this bullet flies. So going back in the bullet here, uh, we're going to create a new public property and we'll make this a float and we're going to call this uh, distance equals 5. And now um, what we're going to do is let's uh, I just want to check my code here. So, okay, when we start this, what we want to make sure is that we're going to calculate where the distance is five units from where we start. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to modify this distance to plus equals mathf.abs. We're going to get the absolute value. Um, transform dot position x. So what we're doing is we're taking the current value of x, where we start um, in the x-coordinate space, and we're adding it to distance. So if we started at 0 in 5 units, we would um, destroy the bullet. If we started at 30 plus 5 in 35 units, and we don't really care about whether it's negative or positive. We don't care if it's to the left or the right. As long as we stick to the absolute value, we can always calculate the correct distance. So the final thing we're going to do here in update is actually test this out. So we'll do uh, math f absolute value transform position x and we're going to see if this is greater than distance. Right? So we're going to get the current position of the, of the bullet itself and if its absolute value is greater than the distance it's allowed to travel we're going to call destroy on it. And let's just do, uh, whoops, we'll just do game object here. So now let's rerun this. And we'll zoom out just a little bit. So now when we shoot, we'll see that the bullet actually disappears.